Welcome to the Bloom Where You're Planted podcast from Never Too Late Cafe. I'm your host, Laura Womack. Each week we sit down for a chat with someone just like you. Someone who had an idea, a passion, a dream, or sometimes just a thought and planted that seed, watched it grow into something they wanted to share with the world. If you have an idea for a topic or someone that would be a guest for the Bloom Where You're Planted podcast, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook where you can join our Never Too Late Cafe Facebook group. We'd love to hear from you. Good morning, everyone. I have with me a special guest, Eric Larson, and I'm gonna have him tell you where he's currently living and what art form he takes part in. Uh, I'm living in Camas, Washington, which is across the river from Portland and a little ways up the gorge, just a few miles. And been here, well, I moved to Portland in 1976, coming from North Idaho. And uh, <laughs> so I've been in Portland much longer than I lived in Idaho. Um, and you've lived in Washington how long? Uh, I've been here six, seven years now, something, something like that. It's, I, I don't keep track of track of years too well anymore. Well, I think COVID changed. A lot of people tell me that um, COVID changed the way they think of time. Is you know, it might seem like a week, and it was two years ago, or the other way around. So, <laughs> I understand yeah. that completely. So, um, what art form do you do? Uh, well, I consider myself more an il of an illustrator uh, mm -hmm. than, a, than an artist. Uh, when somebody needs something uh, drawn or done, I figure out the best way to do it. And part of, I, I started in 1981 and have stayed busy pretty much until the last couple of years when I've sort of retired. And, um, but I was able to stay working by doing a whole bunch of different styles, uh, which works for some people and doesn't work for other people because they can't really, you know, put you on a, they can't tag you quite as well. That's not the word I'm looking for, but uh, they can't uh, put you in a particular category. Right. So um, I, I've i noticed that you have on your social media, you have pet drawings and that fascinates me. They're so realistic. Now, are they like a charcoal? Uh, uh, those, drawings? Are, those are um, graphite pencil drawings. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of them over the last few years. Uh, they, uh, they're, they're for, for friends and for friends of friends and word of mouth people who have seen uh, the drawings on Facebook or, you know, or have heard about them from, uh, from the other people. And uh, that's actually what I'm, what I'm working on now is, you know, uh, about three of those uh, drawings I have kind of backed up and uh, just about finished with one of them. So do you actually see the pet or do you um, go off of a, a picture yeah. or something? Um, most of the pets are actually dead. Oh, I see. It's like a memorial to yeah, them. Yeah, they're memorial and I uh, work, work on them from photos hopefully good photos, but not all the time. Mm. And uh, if it's not a good photo, I try to make it look like it was a good photo when mm. I finish with the artwork. Well, I bet that's much appreciated because no one would have you do that unless it was something, you know, very special to them. Yeah. So. Well, we both know about how much you can love your dogs. Yes. Yes, I definitely. Um, and then you do people. I, right. So do people commission you for that? For gifts or, oh, 
I just got married and I want to have a picture of me and my new spouse or something. Yeah. How does that work? That is how it works. Uh, just the same as the animal drawings. Um, only they, a lot of, a lot of people thought all I did was animal drawings and that I did a few portraits uh, for some people and uh, added those to the ones that I have online. And uh, so that's when I started doing them. But it's the same kind of uh, deal where they'll contact me and say, I, I need a picture of my mother who just passed away or my wife and myself who are still living and uh, you know whatever they want. I, I, I give them. That's kind of how an illustrator is. You just do what they do what they need. So in the illustrating part, I saw some posters. So it's different than your other art. So how did you get started doing those? Are you talking about the Western Star truck posters? Uh, I, I saw uh, for, I think it was a zoo or a circus. It was an elephant, oh, yeah. a tribute to an elephant, but it was not just the elephant. It was. Yep. Yeah. That was the, the packy uh, at the uh, Washington Park Zoo uh, poster. Mm. And uh, uh, Packy is apparently world, world famous, you know, rest in peace. Uh, and that was actually done as a, uh, it was a contest, which I never bothered to enter because, you know, you know, who knows what they're gonna pick. Um, mm -hmm. But I just, just had a feeling, well, I just knew that nobody was gonna be able to do that better than me. And, uh, and I won, you know, thousand bucks, okay, ka -ching. And uh, it uh, was put up uh, as a wall mural uh, at the bottom of the, or at the, on a building at the base of the Burnside Bridge in Portland. And, and it was there for 30 years or so. I, I believe it was done in about 1996, thereabouts, maybe even a little bit earlier than that. But I had to look at the uh, wall mural for decades after that and uh, it has since been been taken down when they remodeled the uh, the exterior of that building and took a couple of floors off of it uh, yeah that was uh, an unusual piece for me right so i mean it was very impressive so i think that's actually how your art caught my eye so um uh, yeah, I, I I thank Pecky for and that poster for that for that. Uh, it's one of my more um, notorious uh, drawings. Mm. Notorious is not quite the right word, but people recognize it because people looked at the wall mural in Portland forever, and um, so it's recognizable. Most of the work that an illustrator does, nobody even sees, except for you know a handful of people who don't know who the artist is and don't need to know. And uh, actually, I rarely even I rarely rarely sign my uh, my illustration work unless it's particularly editorial or something. I just. Well, there's, there's a couple of reasons for that, but. Yeah. Well, now that you mentioned that, it is true that I see, um, you know, it, it's, you're doing it for a company or a project or an organization and, and they want their name out there. So exactly. everything other than that is behind the scenes. So, um, um, so is all of your work custom or do you do some, just putting it out there. Here's something I've done, and you display it, or um, I, 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 I should say you're... commission. I should say commission, not custom. But uh, yep, yeah. um, pretty much 
everything that you see that uh, is on my on my website or on Facebook is is commission work. Um, being in an illustrator turns you into a capitalist to some degree, um. maybe to an extreme degree, to where although I love you know I love drawing and I love doing what I what I do most of the time. Um, I don't do it unless there's money in it. Mm. Uh, I, I used to carry around a sketchbook all the time and draw roses and uh, visit cemeteries and so on and so forth and draw people. Um, but uh, doing it as a profession for uh, I guess it was practically 40 years, takes a little bit of the recreational aspect out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you also get, uh, you have to be very critical about your own work. Um, so I'm always, when I finish something, I'm always looking at it and I, I begin making a mental list of the things that I could have, should have, done better on it mm. uh, so is so that, that so that you would improve for the next time or something or yeah mm -hmm. or to feel better about it no um i you know i recognize when i've done a good job on something and uh allow myself the you know uh, recognition of that um it's very rare that i'm very happy with you know the work that i do particularly mm. people portraits as opposed to animal portraits. I think I'm much better at the animal portraits than I am at the people portraits. Although this, if some people seem to think otherwise, uh, but that doesn't make, uh, <laughs> but I know better. Mm. So. so so, you have that inner critic, I hear, um, creative artist of any form of art talk about, sure. but also how do you handle um, when you've, and you must have through the years had someone that you did work for and they were critical? Oh yeah. Um, you, you learned to, to not take it, <clears throat> excuse me, personally, but if mm. uh, someone is, is, is paying you to do an illustration or a drawing or a portrait or whatever they're doing, um, they deserve to be satisfied. And mm. uh, when, when, when I, I say when I was an illustrator, I guess I still am. Uh, if you're doing commercial work, uh, it's not just about you and the person you're doing the work for. I mean, there's, there are a lot of people in the approval chain. And so you expect that uh, when you finish something, they're going to come back at you with changes. Mm. Uh, some of them are arbitrary. Some of them are necessary. Some of them are uh, just, just subjective. And uh, that's just, it goes, goes with the territory. And if you get bent out of shape about it, uh, then, you know, you're, it's going to make it hard on you and it's also going to make it hard on them. Mm. Uh, I used to take it very personal when I was um, in, in my early years until I learned, learned better. And because uh, when you're say if I'm working for an, an ad agency, uh, an art director, uh, it's not between me and him. Um, he's, he has a creative director, the creative director has the writer uh, and all the other agency higher ups uh, are depending on him to present something to their client who's at the top of the food chain um, to, to make them happy. Mm. And uh, uh, it's, it's always been like a one shot deal. Uh, if, if you don't make them happy, um, 
they never work with you again. That's right. That has, you know, it, it's got to be a one shot and you better hit it. Cause uh, if you make it's the a, relationship. It, yeah. And if you make an art director, you know, look bad in front of, you know, all his people and stuff uh, one time, they will never work with you again. Mm, that's so. so true that in anything, honestly, if you're, the relationship part is so important. So how do you get, when you way back, you said you, um, you know, it bothered you. How did, what did you do internally? I guess that is something that I know some people that are still working on towards that. So how did you, in your head, get you to be tougher? What did you say to yourself? Do you recall any of that so I can offer it to them? Oh yeah. The, uh, about taking it personally, how did you manage to get to that point? To get uh, past that point, I think was mm-hmm. the, uh, the, um, the important right. part. And you do that by, you know, but learning, learning through experience and getting a better perspective on, you know, what you're doing, why, and what's expected of you. And, uh, you know, you're not pleasuring yourself. Uh, you, you're meeting uh, specific requirements that uh, the client needs. Mm-hmm. And um, you have to take that into account when you're, when you're picking the style that you do or, and, and, you know, how well you do the work. Um, at the very beginning, I had some, you know, a couple of very difficult uh, projects that I really didn't think I could pull off. And um, it was a, almost a, a fight or flight uh, situation. If mm. I hadn't uh, finished those and made it through those, I probably would have not continued as an illustrator. Mm. This is long. This is a long time ago. I mean, we're talking the last century. Uh, I'm talking the early '80s. Mm-hmm. I believe uh, about the time that I started uh, really trying to be an, an illustrator was uh, about the same time that John Lennon was shot. That's how long ago that has mm. been. Mm. I used to work with Nike when the Nike headquarters was a small Victorian uh, house. <laughs> wow, what, what a story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Things have changed over the last 40 years, I guess it's been. Yes, they have. So um, one of the things, no, pardon my um, ignorance about terms, but what is vector art? I know I've done some, you know, I'll look for a graphic or I'll do some things. And I know some things are called vector. So how is it different? Um, Vector is digital, digital okay. art, and um, it does does a lot of things. It's um, I started working, switched from for the first half of my career. I guess uh, I did stuff traditionally with pencil, with paint, airbrush, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I switched to to working digitally um, in about 1990, something something like that. Um, partly because uh, I was a little tired of doing the very highly rendered uh, realistic uh, drawings that take a very long time, and um, after having done them for uh, a, a bunch of years. Uh, the style itself uh, was becoming a little passe and uh, I wanted to change. And Mm. so the change was that I uh, bought a Mac 2 FX and a a Wacom tablet and uh, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. And uh, literally overnight, it completely changed my style and the way that I 
you know, the way that I worked. And uh, it's only in the last couple of years that I've gone back to the more highly rendered realistic kind of uh, kind of work that I did so much of in the in the early 80s and the mid 80s and the mm. early 90s I did it for a long time wow so uh, um there was comps there was something about marker comps what is oh, that yeah. term uh that's that's an ad agency uh thing where um uh, if you've ever watched bewitched uh darren was uh was i believe was cast as an art director in an agency you know mm, pipe, pipe right. smoking uh, agency kind of thing right and um when they have a concept, they when they want to have an advertisement and the client wants to see how it's going to look before they publish it, uh, they do what's called a, a, a comp. And uh, that's, they get an artist to, to draw the thing out and make it look just as much like the, you know, final art uh, of the advertisement is going to look so that the client isn't surprised uh, in a bad way. So it's a uh, mock-up, and, sort of a yes, mock-up? It's, it's, a, it's a mock-up. It was done with, um, um, they have just a complete range of uh, markers. Design Art Markers was the brand that I used. And uh, for a long time, that was uh, one of the mainstays of my um, business and uh, and other illustrators' business because agencies needed to use freelance artists to 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 create those things, and uh, there were only a few of us that were really good at it, and uh, so we they were the ones that we called. Um, I think I've done that. <laughs> well, the very, very beginning, I have had a concept and I had a customer and somehow I, you know, through conversations, I got, you know, the collars and the design part and um, did my own sketches and some cut and paste. Honestly, my cut and paste mm -hmm. is really cut and paste and uh -huh. gave Mine it to the to artist. And gave it to the artist that was going to do the rest of it, you know, uh -huh. and so it probably wasn't as good as what you're referring to. It was just, it really was some sketches and some ideas of what I saw their interest was. So right. um, that's really helpful to an artist when uh, most of the art directors that I've worked with have minimal, um, you know, artistic skills. Um, but, uh, if they are fl fluid enough, uh, with their hand to eye coordination and they can sketch out a little bit, or at least, uh, send me a very good description, uh, of the points that they want, uh, covered in, in the illustration. It's, it's really helpful. You're not just swinging, you know, blindfolded and swinging the bat at a ball that you can't see or working right. in the dark. You know, you know, you know what the goal is. And I like well, it like that. And I'm sure then from there you can, you know, they say, oh, I like this, but change, change this. And it gives uh -huh. it's a point of reference, I guess. Yep. Usually that hope usually and hopefully that is taken care of in just the preliminary sketches. Um, uh, revisions are kind of the bane of, uh, of illustrators. Um, so you, you try, and, try and get any changes worked out in the preliminary sketches rather than wait until after you've done the, the full whole color, full meal deal, and then have to go back and change it. It's difficult to do that. 
uh, it requires a lot of extra time depending on what needs to be done. And it's almost never budgeted to uh, do, you know, the extra, the extra time, the extra work. Um, so, Revisions always cost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, but usually they don't, uh, they it's presumed that if they if you need to change something it's you you change it uh it just makes the jobs go go longer um mm. but uh i see I, you've <laughs> done some illustrations with book covers as well yeah yeah um so not, how did that come about actually here's here's one one here which is the most recent one that i've done i got this was published about a month and a half uh, two months ago something like that uh, i've worked for uh gotten in touch with publishers or they've gotten in touch with me and uh, uh educational publishers uh, you know, people that have a, a publication that they need. I don't do a lot of covers. Uh, one of my goal was goals long time was was to uh, d do a uh, cover for Time magazine, which which never happened, and for the New Yorker uh, covers. Um, actually did some illustration that ended up in Time Magazine, but never never got the covers. The covers mm. pay, pay better than the, what we call spot illustrations, or, um, you know, they, they kind of prioritize them and budget them by whether they're full page, half page, quarter page, or, or spot. Uh, I'll take I'll take any any and all of them uh, is uh, what I've you know how I've always always worked. Well, I'm sure that still gets your name out regardless of the size, you know. Um, and pretty and much the people who need to know uh, who did the work uh, know who did the work. As as far as like the re readers, the the magazine's readers. Uh, people will look at look at what you've done and enjoy the artwork, but they don't care about where it came from. And mm, uh, that's I see. perfectly all right with me. This podcast is called Bloom Where You're Planted. And I always ask guests, what does that phrase mean to you and how it's been in your life? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's the question. Um, bloom where you planted means uh, it's 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 it, it sounds a little artisty to me uh it's more like uh you get what you get and you better deal with it uh mm. you know you land where you land and you better take a a real good uh look at you know where you are and and uh what where you want to be and uh do what you need to do to 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 get there. Um, you you deal with your deal with your situation. And um, uh, when I started out as an artist, um, what I what I thought an artist did as a, an illustrator. Um, uh, geez, Norman Rockwell was was my role model. Mm -hmm. I thought, uh, you know, how bad can it be to make these beautiful paintings and live in a New England farmhouse and, and so on and so forth? Uh, not very realistic, but that's kind of what I was working towards. Um, and, uh, you know, it's totally, totally unrealistic because that was a, an entirely different era. And, you know, he was, you know, one of the greats. Um, so I just, you know, make the best of, you know, and do the best that I can, you know, in any, in any situation. Someone listening to this is, I am sure, is going to hear something that they can take away 
and to apply to their life. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're an artist. They could be a musician or they could be an organizer of, of events or whatever. So what words of wisdom, though, would you give to someone that is wanting to do what you have done? Um, under promise, over deliver. Um, do not only not just what is expected, uh, do better than what's expected. Uh, one of the, the best compliments I ever got was from an art director, and I made that my words of wisdom. Uh, he'd come to me, I'd done plenty of work for him, and he came to me with a very under-budgeted job and was apologizing you know, abject apologies because he knew that uh, he was asking much more than what the uh, the agency was paying for. And I said, yep, I'll take it. And I did it for him because he was a good client, uh, but I didn't cut any corners. I did it if it had a $250 budget, but should have had a $2,000 budget. I did it just just the way it was supposed to be done. Uh, you don't cut corners. You do more than what's expected. And then, you know, that's, that's what you have to do. I like that. I like those words. And you never miss a, and you never miss a deadline. If you say you're going to do something by such and such a time, you better do something by such and such a time. Mm. Uh, Never miss, never miss a deadline, uh, but that's an illustrator thing. Oh, I can see that because uh, a lot is relying on that. So, well, you know, um, I really have appreciated uh, our time together. Um, oh, and man. down the road, I hope as uh, new things come up for you and uh, we might chat again. So tell me what is next? for Eric? What is next? Um, uh, one of my long-term goals has been to keep doing what I'm doing as long as I can. And uh, that's, that's what's next. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to, to do that. As far as, uh, although I didn't make the cover of Time Magazine, uh, and, you know, I'm not, uh, never became Norm, Norman Rockwell. I've worked with enough people and done enough. I've, I've done pretty much everything I wanted to do, put it, mm -hmm. uh, put it that way. And so my long-term goal from here is to keep being able to, to do it. it sounds it, like you are the best version of Eric, not someone else, but the best <laughs> version of you. <laughs> yeah, that's about all you can be mm. you know, is, your, is yourself. And I've had to reinvent myself a bunch of times, but, uh, you know, it, it comes, comes back to you mm. for me. Right. That's very unclear, isn't it? <laughs> so, I, again, I thank you. And so this is Laura Walmack, and I'm saying bye for now. And thank you so much, Eric. Larson for being our guest today. Bye now. It's my pleasure. Bye-bye.